If you've never seen adaptive profiles in action, they're pretty cool. They're actually now inside of Lightroom Classic and Lightroom. They've been in Adobe Camera Raw for a while, uh, but they're now inside of both versions of Lightroom. And think of almost as a uh, different way of doing an auto setting to a photo if you're somebody that uses those settings. But we'll cover that and the other features in the February 2025 dot update to Lightroom. I uh, think of a dot update as it's kind of maybe just a smaller update, although there are some decent little features um, inside of this one. We'll cover that one and all the other ones in this video. Let's jump in. Now we'll start off in Lightroom Classic. And if you wanted to see the new features inside of Lightroom, then I'll just put the time code here. You can always skip forward to just those features here. But as far as Lightroom Classic goes, um, you might or may not have seen a new feature that was inside of Adobe Camera Raw a while ago called Adaptive Profiles. Well, those have made it over here into Classic. The way to think of an adaptive profile is, uh, so first off, you wanna be working on a raw file for this. Next up, when you go into your edit mode here and you look at the very top, you'll see the profile area. And typically the most popular one has been Adobe Color, but we could always go in here and we could uh, browse and we could change those profiles. Well, you'll also see an adaptive section down here toward the bottom. And you can see there's an adaptive color and there's an adaptive black and white. So the way adaptive works, profiles were always just a different starting place, okay? Whenever, whenever you see an image anywhere, on any screen anywhere, it has a profile applied to it. That's, it's the fingerprint of whatever software, whatever screen that you're looking at. So we could always come in here and essentially change that fingerprint. It's a different starting place for your photos and Adobe's always given us a couple of different points that we could use and we could always create our own or buy presets and things like that. So adaptive is just, the way I think of it is almost as a different type of an auto setting, okay? And an important point is that if you're gonna use an adaptive profile like I have here, you generally wouldn't want to use the auto setting inside of your edit settings. So you're not gonna use them both at the same time. But with adaptive, I'll go ahead and click on it. We'll close this up. I'll just hit the backslash key and you can see that's before, that's after, before, after. Typically our profiles would change things like contrast and color. They didn't work too much that I would find from highlights and shadows and overall tone of the photo. And that's where I see the big difference between the adaptive profiles is, is they do. Again, look at the before, look at the trees in the foreground. There's the after definitely changing things. If you were to look at this area off in the distance, you'll see that's before, that's after. So what I'm seeing is a little bit more contrast to it and I'm seeing actually more definition in the clouds, which actually tells me that it's going in there and it's doing something to the overall tone in the photo. So again, you can choose that here. If you are gonna choose that, don't use auto. Adobe will recommend if I click it, it even says for best results, don't use auto and adaptive together. And if you do use adaptive profiles and you have an HDR capable monitor, which a lot of people do have, uh, I won't get caught going down the rabbit hole of HDR because you can't really see it. Uh, the screen recording software won't show it to you, but all I'll say is this, if you use HDR editing mode, you'll never want to go back. Um, and I'm excited to see, that's not a new feature here. I'm excited to see where that goes in the future as more and more apps, more and more things start to support it. Uh, you will look at your photo in HDR mode and you will never want to see it in anything but. Speaking of never wanting to see anything else, uh, if you watch one of my courses, you'll never want to see another one or somebody else's, I don't know, that doesn't sound good, but we'll go with it. Uh, this is a very quick word from our sponsor. Um, I've got a course called From Simple to Stunning. Think of this as a, as a creative workflow course. So it's not going to teach you the technicals. I have somebody, I'm not a technical person. I'm somebody that always values the creative mind over the technical mind. And the the, the creative stuff is, is harder to learn. It's easy to look at things and, and move sliders and try to figure out what they do. But the creative stuff of what settings do I achieve? What settings do I use? And why do I use those settings? To me, those are harder to do. And the simple to stunning course is where I take just very simple, ordinary photos, good bones. I gotta have a good photo to start with. Uh, they're actually submitted by my customers and I do a lot of creative work to them. And along the way, I explain why I'm doing that work to come to a, uh, what I consider a really cool outcome. So if you're interested in that type of a course, it's on sale, really easy to watch, includes all the photos so you can follow along. So uh, swing by the website to find out more. 
All right, next up here, if we go up to the Lightroom menu on a Mac or the edit menu on a PC, we can go to catalog settings and you will notice there is a backups tab here. So normal things that we could do up here at the top is look at the backup folder, choose how often we want it to backup, but now it actually shows you your backups here. So you choose your location um, and then it'll show you the backups that are listed there. You can click on one, you can click on show, it'll show you where it is. Uh, you can click on delete to get rid of some of those backups or remove that one from the list there. So if you're looking to manage your backups a little bit more intuitively rather than just kind of try to remember where they are and go look for them later. Um, that's a good feature to do it with. Public service announcement, go into your folders and delete old backups. You don't need them. They're taking up a lot of space and I'm, I'm amazed at what some people tell me when I remind them of this on how many gigabytes of old backups that they delete. All you need is the latest one. If you wanna save more than that and you have a reason to feel free to, but all you really need is the latest one. Moving on from there, uh, I'm not gonna actually demonstrate it here. I'll just put a little bit of an overlay of the video. There's an improved tether support for Sony, Nikon, and Canon. So you can click on the, the image in the tether area to uh, set your focus point. And then you can also change your focus areas within there. So if you're somebody that shoots tethered, that's another feature. And then the last one isn't really, isn't really that easy to demonstrate. All I can tell you is that when, you, when you're adding things to the photo, so if you're gonna start making changes to all of the different panels, okay? If you're gonna start going and start to do uh, generative and eraser removes and things, and then come into the masking tool and start to create a lot of masks on the photo, um, what's gonna happen is things are gonna start to get sluggish, especially as you start to get a lot of masks in there. So they've just done speed improvements. I've seen demonstrations of it from people that have decent computers and to see how it slows down and to see the results of how it works with a new computer, uh, pretty pretty staggering there. So if you haven't updated yet, maybe, maybe try it out. Maybe create an image with a bunch of edit settings and throw 10 masks on there and then try to brush something and you'll see how slow it gets. Then go and update your uh, Lightroom and come back to it and you'll see uh, that it is a lot faster. Okay, let's flip over into Lightroom. So this is simply called Lightroom. The other one's called Lightroom Classics. This isn't called Lightroom Cloud. It's not called Lightroom CC, it's simply called Lightroom. Uh, it's actually the version I use. I don't really use Classic anymore, although I do most of my teaching with it because that's what most people still use. Uh, but they've got a, a couple of new features in here. So if you go under the edit settings, uh, just like Lightroom Classic and Adobe Camera Raw have, we now have the adaptive setting. So you'll really see it on this photo. Again, uh, you can see that's before, that's after, before and after. So it's trying to adapt to the photo. You do have an amount adjustment here that you can always fine tune it. And then of course, uh, if you wanted to, you could browse to all of your profiles and see all of them. If you wanted to include this in your favorites, because you'll see the favorites is always up here at the top. A uh, little tip for you is go to that profile and click on the little star. So there's also an adaptive black and white one. Um, I've, always, I've always said Adobe, um, Adobe Lightroom and Camera Raw have the best black and white presets that exist. You don't need to go buy more, um, but if you do convert to black and white, I don't really do much black and white, so I could turn that star off so it frees up some space inside of that favorites area. Uh, another big one, so this is gonna be for people that used to use Lightroom Classic, like myself, that now use Lightroom and have missed dual monitor support. You'll see there's a little icon in the bottom left-hand corner. So you can go in there and go into your secondary window. I don't have one, I don't use two screens, but I know a lot of people do. So uh, this is a good one if you've been looking for that feature. And then the last one is going to be, there's a compare view. So we, we've, had, we've had compare view inside of Lightroom for a while now. This isn't a necessarily a new feature, but the way compare view worked inside of Lightroom, a similar way it works in Lightroom Classic, you're, you're comparing multiple photos. Well, there's an option up here where it says multiple image, but you can change it to before and after, okay? So what that does is that actually lets us compare our before and after images on the photo. So I could go and in here and I could go there and let's just, let's just reset that photo. So I'll just press Command or Control R. So now I can compare 
the before and after next to each other. I could swap them if I wanted to see uh, the before and after uh, from that perspective. So it's, uh, it's again, not that we, we couldn't see a before and after earlier, but at least now we can see them side by side, which can definitely help. Uh, so earlier I, I talked about a simple to stunning course. If you're not interested in the course, but you still want to, to get a feel for some of that before after workflow. Uh, again, I mentioned those are my favorite videos and I've got one here for you to watch where I, I take a photo from start to finish and you can see the entire process unfold. So if you're looking for something, that's a great place to go to next.